How's it going? Welcome back to the channel here, Glorious Botafogo, a channel that we talk about everything about the Glorious One. And look, I know it's been a little while, but during the transfer window, I thought it was best to kind of watch from afar or watch from the shadows when I didn't want to add to the speculation. I didn't want to add any possible false information. So I stayed out of the spotlight and I just waited. I waited for the transfer window to be over to come back and make the videos because I knew that this transfer window was going to be a whole lot different. It was, it's going to make the team and it did make the team a whole lot different than before, especially compared to last year. So the transfer window in Brazil is closed. Only players that were able to, that were able to be released from their contract before Monday, they are the only players that the clubs now in Brazil can sign. So if a player was able to get out of their contract before then, then it's free game. But if a player gets out of the contract today, for example, and wants to sign for Botafogo, then that can't happen. Let's talk about everybody that Botafogo signed from last season, uh, from this two windows, where we're talking about both windows, but spe specifically the second window. During the first window, John Texter really wanted to get the team ready to compete. The team that we had in 2021 in the Brazilian Serie A in 2022 was not going to cut it. So what did John Texter do? He signed some players who were able to come in and play right away. And that is the case with Felipe Sampaio, Cuesta, Cheche, Patrick de Paula, Edison, Vinicius Lopes, Victor Sá. So those players, they kind of came in right away. And they did make the team better. But the problem is, Botafogo had a good starting 11, but did not have the supplements, the bench, the reserves to make it really a competitive squad all together. But Botafogo just didn't have that. So then came the second transfer window. And now things are looking a whole lot better. Luis Castro was complaining that he had players in the squad that played the Seti B last year that did not have enough experience, enough play time in the A division to really make it a competitive team. So Luis Castro complained, John Texture listened to his complaints and signed more players during the second transfer window. Some players from the squad were already playing as soon as the second transfer window opened, like Marçal. He came in and he took over the left back position. He is a starting left back and there's no ifs, ends, and buts about it. And let's go from position to position with the players that Botafogo signed. In goal, Botafogo finally signed a goalkeeper to compete with Gachito Fernandes. Lucas Perri is an exceptional goalkeeper. He's a young goalkeeper. He played for the national team for the um, under 20 divisions and I believe the under 17 divisions he has a lot of uh, highlight reel saves in there so he's a very young and promising goalkeeper that I truly honestly believe he will challenge Fernandes for the starting position but Fogo also signed another center back in Adrielson we saw 30 minutes of Adrielson uh, last week where he played against um, Atlético Goianiense and he did really well from the little time that we saw him play. So a lot of people are speculating that Adrielson will take over the starting position and be the right side of defender alongside Victor Cuesta on the left. And speaking of Victor Cuesta, the player is now a Brazilian citizen, which opens up another slot in the team for a foreign player. In the midfield is where I think Botafogo did the best in this transfer window. We signed Gabriel Pires, Carlos Eduardo, and we also signed Danilo Barbosa and Jacob Montes. Now, Jacob is a big question mark. He was playing collegiate soccer uh, here in the United States, so he's a big question mark. We don't really know much about him. Gabriel Pires had some outstanding 
outstanding seasons in Portugal playing for Benfica. He was in the team of the year. He scores goals. He makes great passes, got great vision, great dribbling, great physical. And on top of that, Gabriel Pires is a Botafogo supporter, just like Rafael. Gabriel is going to be one of us on the pitch, just like Rafael. So I'm excited to see Gabriel Pires play. I think that over time, especially in the beginning of the season, next season, I think he will be in the starting position. Danilo Bahabosa is a sweeper. He's like a a container um, defensive midfielder. He even plays center back sometimes. And it's going to be him and che, uh, him and Luis Oyama and Cheche fighting for that spot. I think due to experience, I think Danilo Bahabosa might take it. But it's good to have other players um, for that role. And I have been a big criticizer of Cheche, but he's doing rather well lately. Lucas Fernandes is the best one in the midfield. So I don't think he's leaving. Eduardo, aka Carlos Eduardo, he's been playing really well alongside Lucas Fernandes. So we will see what Luis Castro is going to choose to do because he likes to play with those two wide wingers on the left side and the right side with the forward, the striker. So he's got Cheche, Lucas Fernandes, Gabriel Pires, Danilo Barbosa, Gustavo Sauer, Eduardo, Patrick de Paula. He's got a lot of names. He's got seven, eight names for three potentially four spots. It's looking good in the midfield for Botafogo, that's for sure. When it comes to forwards, Botafogo made some modest acquisitions, except for one. Chiquinho Suarez, which he's not my cousin, even though we shared the last name. Chiquinho Suarez came to be our number nine. He's going to be literally the number nine in the field. Uh, I know Edison is 90 and Mateus Nascimento is 89. He's had great seasons in Portugal, just like Gabriel Pires has been top, uh, top scorer for Porto. So Tiquinho Soares is really going to be our target, our poacher, our target man there up front. We also have Edison. The problem with Edison is that when he gets the ball, there's a reason why we call Edison El Toro, meaning the bull. He puts his head down and he just tramples the defense. And he will go towards the goal and doesn't matter who's standing in front of him. Chiquinho Suarez is more, it's kind of like a hybrid between Edison and Mateus Nascimento with 10 plus ears on top of them as far as experience is concerned. For the sides, Botafogo brought back Luis Henrique from Marseille. We have Victor San. On the other side, we have Jeffinho. Jeffinho was playing as a left-sided winger, but he is good enough to be on both sides. And I don't think Jeffinho is going to come out of this team. I really don't. Jeffinho came in and he just offers that Brazilian flair, that, that, that magic that a lot of teams now they don't have. So I believe Jeffinho is going to play on the right side. Victor Sá is going to play on the left with Chiquinho Suarez as the goal striker. But it could be that we have also a brand new signing, Junior Santos, that he could very well play on the right side as a winger. He could also play as a striker. I've seen videos from Junior Santos and he could play that uh, right wing role, the left wing role, because he does have a lot of strength. He's a, he has a lot of speed and he's got a lot of technique. He's He knows how to dribble. That is not an issue. I'm really interested to see what Luis Castro is going to do with these players, with this squad, because he doesn't have any more room for complaints. He can't complain that he doesn't have a squad because he does. If you put Botafogo's players in the squad alongside the other squads in the Brazilian championship, Botafogo squad is better than most. I mean, we're talking maybe the teams that are in the top five, maybe might have a better one. And that's, and that's a stretch. I'd say Palmeiras, Atlético Mineiro, Flamengo. I don't know who else. A lot of teams in the second window got weaker. Botafogo only got stronger. So I think the team has the potential to do really well in the second part of the Brazilian championship. Now, what would be my starting 11? Well, let's look over here. My starting 11 with the players that we have here. On goal, I'd say Gachito Fernandes. Right side for a bright back, I would say Rafael, Adrielson, Victor Cuesta, Marçal. I think the defense is locked in and set with those guys. On the midfield, I would go with Carlos Eduardo, Lucas Fernandes, and Gabriel Pires. I think those three players are able to do all three roles really well. And if they constantly switch, especially Lucas Fernandes and Eduardo, I think 
we will have enough marking power, mar marking presence in the midfield, but as well as a good passing and good vision. So Eduardo, Lucas Fernandes, Gabriel Pires in front of them. On the left side, I would put Victor Sá. If he comes back and plays like he was playing before the injury, if not, I would put um, Jefinho on that side. And then when I'll go Chiquinho Suarez, and then on the right, Victor Sá is on the left, then Jafinho is on the right. If Jafinho is on the left, then I would put either Luis Henrique or Junior Santos as a right winger, and we will see how it goes. Obviously, the immediate, immediate substitutions that I would make would be Cheche, Danilo Barbosa, Gustavo Sauer, Patrick de Paula there in the mid. I would put Matheus Nascimento or Edison, Edison before Matheus Nascimento, even Junior Santos before Matheus Nascimento there as a um, striker. I think Matheus Nascimento does really well as a second striker, a center forward or a center attacking mid. And then in defense, you could say Carly or Canu. If Rafael can't play, then I guess Daniel Borges would play there on the right side as well with Ugo on the left side. We have, we have a squad, we have a team. So there's no more excuses to be made apart from the fact that he needs to get this, this team playing and his new players up to speed on what he wants to see in the pit. On October the 2nd, I will be in Florida, in Fort Lauderdale, North Hollywood, in Florida, to attend the Torcida Jovem. It's a Botafogo supporter group. They're going to have a party there. And I was invited to this party. And it's going to have John Texer. It's going to have a few other legends from the club. And I'm really excited. I'm going to be documenting the whole thing. And once I'm there, I'm going to try to get some interviews with John Texer, with Jefferson, with Gonçalves, with a bunch of other players that have said that they were going to be there. So I can't not wait to see everybody there. I want to thank the Torcida Jovem supporter group for inviting me, and I can't wait to see you guys.